So to continue on with arrays and look at a few examples within Eclipse here of some code, uh, let's take a look at this program here that I've made. So the first question here is why do we need arrays? I never really answered that question yet. Um, we need arrays because we sometimes don't know uh, how many elements we're gonna have and it's a real pain to, if you have a large number of names, for example, you wanna store like 100 names, you would have to make a hundred different string variable names, name one, name two, all the way up to 100, right? And that's not a great way to do it. So it's much better instead if you can make an array to store all the names under one um, variable here called names. And then you can just say how many you want to store, 100. So this would make um, a list of 100 empty spots that would be available to store strings. So that's, uh, that's like I've shown previously. Um, there is a shortcut for making arrays. If you already know what the values are, you can pre-populate them. The advantage of doing this here, uh, as I did with options, is you don't have to uh, size and construct the array with the keyword new. So you can just say it will be a string array called options, and I'm going to set it equal to these finite number of things you're going to type, strings in this case. So it could be options for, uh, you know, yes, no, maybe, for a survey or something, for a question. Um, another thing you could do, uh, if you remember, we did uh, a problem where we had to randomly generate an operator. And we did that by saying, okay, generate a number between 0 and 3, which is four different possibilities. And then if it was a 0, uh, make it a plus sign for the operation. If it was a 1, make it a... Uh, subtraction question two make a division and three make it multiply so we could have done that um, by making an array where we know this is element zero so if uh, you generate a zero you can pick out operator which is the name of our array square bracket whatever number was generated whatever random number like zero would pick out this one so that's actually a much better way to solve that problem if we hadn't known about arrays at the time Another really handy thing to know is how long is this array? So if we want to know how long it is, there is a length property. Now I say it's a property because it's not a method. If uh, this was a method, it would have round brackets after it like this. So it's not a method, it's just a property. The reason is that arrays can't be resized, so you know, it's just a fixed property of this array object. So if we look at uh, how we might use that, we might use that to know, well, what is the last element in our names array? For example, once we fill it up, um, we want to know the last one. So uh, if we're not really sure what the size is, we could just say the last element uh, in the array is element 99, right? Because 100 is how long it is, but it starts counting from zero. So the last element, it's 99. So you could say names.length minus one would be the last element. So yeah, so I could, if I want, I could just say this out and I could do, oh yes, wait for it. Oh my goodness. So yeah. It's going to print uh, the name, the last name, by using names.length minus one. So, okay, right, so names square bracket square bracket, and then I could say num name. Well, since I stored it in a variable already, which I don't really usually do, but num names minus one. That would be the last one in my list. This out for a sec. Okay, so now if I run this thing. So it says null because I haven't initialized that to anything, um, which is fine because I just made my array, but I didn't set up um, any values. If I want to make sure the last one exists, I could say names. 
bracket 99 equals Bob, good old Bob. And then now if I run it, it will show me Bob because it's not null anymore. Now, if I forgot that uh, arrays are zero indexed and I just said, give me the last one by just saying num names, which is the length of the array. This is a really common thing for people to do because they forget. Um, then it should say out of bounds exception, array index out of bounds exception. So that's, and it says you're trying to get index 100 out of um, an array that has length 100. So basically it's telling you you went too far out of range. So, um, so how do I print a whole array though? That's, that's the question. So you would think that I should be able to just say print names, which is my array. Let's try it, see what it does. It does something really weird down here. It says that, you know, it's a string something, and then it's at symbol and a weird hexadecimal number. Now that weird number is the memory location of where the array is stored, which is pretty much useless. You don't really care about that. As a programmer, you just want to know what's in there. So unfortunately, you can't just print an array. You have to loop through every element and print them individually. But fortunately, we know about methods. So what I did here was I made a method that will, um, let me just call this out. Uh, this method will print any string array. So I say print string array uh, and made it generic so I can print any of my arrays. Um, so in this case, um, I'm just going to rename my parameter r, like a pirate, I guess. So this is my string array. Um, so internally, I'm going to reference it as arr. So it could be, I could pass it names, I could pass it options or operator, operators, maybe I should call that. Um, so I can pass it any of those and it would print all the elements out. The reason it can do this is because it goes up to the array's length. And you can see at the moment, um, maybe you can see the error that I've pre-made in here, um, what should happen. But uh, it should loop through every element with i as the index and saying print the array that you've given me, pass me at element i. So if I run this, um, I can just say, yeah, print string. All right, and I will give it maybe options. Okay, so we run this now. There we go. So it prints yes, no, maybe, and then it crashes because it says it's trying to get to index three out of bounds for an array with length three. So because these are index zero, one, and two, and my array, my print method tried to go up to and including the length. So tried to print element three, there's no element three and it crashes, it looks ugly. So let's get rid of the equal sign. You always go from zero to less than the length. Okay, so now that should work properly. And maybe I'll just try and I'll feed it. Instead of options, I'll feed it up reports. So now we can see that it should work. Uh, Oh, right. Sorry. Yeah, that's a char. <laughs> so we'll not do that. Um, if I print names, it won't really work well because they're all null and it wouldn't be yeah, very exciting. So let's print options again. So yeah, um, if I wanted to print a char array, I would have to make a different method. Um, but as long as I have methods of a certain type, I can make a sorry, an array of a certain type, I can make a method to print string array, no matter what kind of string or what's in the string array or how long it is, it'll always print my entire string array. So yeah, I could make one uh, to accept char array instead, um, and that would, that would work fine. Um, so yeah, there wouldn't be any change down here at all, just the parameter type.
So um, yeah, that's that's uh, about it. Uh, the basics of it. Uh, I did make another program here. Um, you know, it has some words here, um, just showing how to make in one line. Um, also, you might want to declare a reference to an array, but you don't know the size until later. Maybe you ask the user how big they want, how many words they're going to enter, etc. So you might just declare a reference to an array called list, which is of type string. And later on, you can finish the job once you maybe got the six as the user inputted value. You could then say list equals new string and whatever the number they they put in was. And here's a another way to also, you know, instead of listing them off in curly brackets like I showed previously, you could just do them one at a time. Here they are, right? And you can do things like now you can pick somebody randomly from the list. You can find the longest word, the shortest word. You can write methods for these. Um, you know, they just loop through and um, compare the current uh, array value with the currently shortest one. Um, now here I'm using the length. This is a string method because shortest is a string. Anyways, I don't want to get into too much detail on that, but um, you can do a lot of fancy things. To pick a name randomly is pretty simple. If you feed it a list, you just pick a random number between, and this is why random numbers start at zero. It's very handy. Now you can just multiply math.random, multiply by the length of the list, cast it to an integer, and that would give you a number between zero and the length of the list minus one. So which would pick a name randomly from your list. Um, so other things, just one last thing here um, to show you some more powerful things. So uh, what I could do is I could make a... Um, make my program read from a file. It's not actually so hard, but I don't want to focus on how you uh, read from a file, but I make this file object. It's going to read from comments.txt. So if I look down here, outside of my project, I have this comments thing. It's got all the report card comments uh, that I can pick from. So say I want to make a program that um, goes through and finds a comment for me based on a word that I want. So um, if I know how many comments there are, I could make my comments uh, array here, um, the right size, and then I can connect to it with my scanner. This is reading file stuff, but anyways, once I've got it set up and connected to the file, then instead of just saying next line, getting from the keyboard, I'm getting it actually out of the file, and I'm looping through from element zero all the way up to the length, but not inclusive, and eyes going up each time, each time talking about here's the element that I want to fill up in my array, read it out of the um, file. And, you know, in this case, I just thought, oh, let's let's pick out only the com comments that have the word challenge in it. So if you remember index of means that um, for a string, this is a string, it means that the string, which is a sentence, uh, contains the word challenge somewhere in it. So index of, if it's greater than or equal to zero, it means the word challenge is in it somewhere. There is also a contains method, which is probably um, just as easy. But uh, So I'm going to print out, if I run this, it's going to read in all that file of 1,500 comments, and it picked out the ones that had challenge so challenges challenge 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 so apparently there's five of them okay so uh, just to show you if i don't sub-select i'll just print out all of them all of the comments there we go so now there's all the comments i just read them out of a file each one is stored into this array so that's that's pretty powerful um you could some, sometimes you want to maybe play Hangman or Scrabble and you want to load up the entire dictionary of thousands and thousands of English words. And um, you can do that in just a few lines, um, connect to the file, read them all in, in a loop. You got them all stored in an array called words, for example. Then if you're playing uh, Scrabble and you want to check if that's an actual word, all you need to do is a for loop through everything in your array and check if the word that you um, just typed is actually somewhere contained in the array. 
So there's a lot of powerful things you can do. And that's, for now, that's, that's it. That's all I need to say about one-dimensional arrays.